Oh. Awesome. And so we're on to our headliner. Uh, our headliner this month is none other than Josh Miles. Josh is a self-professed caffeine and Twitter addict and the principal and founder of the Indianapolis-based branding firm Miles Design. His role at Miles Design consists of leading brand strategy, business development, and firm-wide marketing. Josh is the author of the Content Marketing Institute book called The Bold, Bold Brand, The New Rules for Differentiating Branding and Marketing Your Professional Services Firm. Josh Miles speaks from coast to coast on branding, digital marketing, and social media. Josh is honored as one of Indianapolis' business journals, 40 Under 40. He lives in Indianapolis with his wife and two ridiculously cute kiddos. So give me a, help me out by welcoming Josh to talk to us this evening. Thank you. You know, the, the cool thing about being in the branding business is that we're like a combination of psychiatrist and talk show host. So our job is to get our clients to lie down on the couch, metaphorically speaking, of course, and tell us about their deepest, darkest secrets. And then we take those secrets and meld them with images and words to create stories that help position that client's product or service in a really specific place in our client's minds. Now the interesting thing is sometimes our clients come to us with a really specific idea of what they want things to do, what they think they want to get to where they think they need. And the irony is sometimes to help to get them what they need, we have to save them from what they think they want. And that is a paradox. However, that's not the paradox that we're talking about today. Today we're talking about the paradox of brand experience. It's that idea of, have you ever delivered technically perfect service to your client and for some reason they think it wasn't perfect? You gave them A plus work, but for some reason they thought it wasn't an A plus. That's a paradox. So let's unpack a little bit about perhaps why that happens. So go with me, if you will, in the Wayback Machine to the first time I experienced this, you know, grade that I received that I didn't earn in driver's ed. Now I had a driver's ed instructor who was approximately a million years old, and I'm pretty sure he couldn't see that I was running red lights, that I was usually speeding, that I turned left down a one-way street the wrong way, and on my first day of driver's ed, I murdered a groundhog. <laughs> da -dump, da -dump. He was definitely dead, and that's a true story. At the end of driver's ed, my driver's ed instructor said, Josh, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you an A, but that doesn't mean you're an A driver. Have a good summer. I'm still not really sure what that means, but I received a grade that I did not earn. I promise you. So how is it sometimes that maybe we think we have earned a grade that we don't receive? Well, one reason I think is perhaps the words. So think again with me. I'm in, still in high school at this point, senior year, and I'm sitting in my English class. It's the first day of school. The lights are down and everybody's talking. And you know that moment when you realize the whole class is busted and the teacher's been waiting for you to shut up for seconds that feel like they went on forever? Well, there's that moment. Silence falls over the room. And our teacher from the corner says, I'm thinking of a frog. He's got his desk pulled back into the corner, like as far back as you can go, and you can just barely make out his silhouette, and he's all mysterious, and he says, I said, I'm thinking of a frog. Well, somebody was brave enough to say, it's an amphibian. It hops around, it's green, it croaks. That is a frog, but I'm afraid that's not the frog I was thinking of. I said, I'm thinking of a frog. And somebody says, that, <clears throat> that thing when you can't really speak, you get a frog in your throat. That's the, and he says, yes, that is a frog. 
but that's still not the frog I was thinking of. I said, I'm thinking of a frog. The violin player says, that thing on the end of my bow at the end, that's what you're talking about, right? That's a frog. And he says, ah, yes, that is a frog. But that's still, not, this went on for the entire hour. <laughs> Bell rings, class dismissed. Next day, we get in, and the teacher starts to go in to Chaucer. And one of our students says, whoa, 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 teacher, you got to explain to us what was up with the frog. What frog were you thinking of? And he looks him square in the eye, and he says, you have misunderstood the point of the exercise. It was not about a frog that I was thinking of. The point is, in my class, when you're communicating to someone, no matter how clear you think you're being, you have to be really careful that the words that you choose communicate exactly what you want them to communicate. So sometimes it's the words, but sometimes it's this thing that we call positioning. So for those of you who are not math majors, the x-axis is the thing that goes this way, and the y-axis goes this way. So let's imagine on this axis that this is cheap over here and expensive over here. And that at the bottom you do everything for everybody and at the top you do a very specific select number of services. This chart that we see behind me is what's called a commodity. So we see lots of people competing for cheap to do lots of different things. So in the retail world, who would this be? Who does lots of, who sells lots of different things at a really cheap price? Walmart, thank you. This story is still batting a thousand. Every time we tell this, we get Walmart. This one is called a premium product or service. They're usually fewer players. They command top dollar and they sell less stuff. This might be Ferrari or Coach or yeah, lots of brands that play in the premium space. Most of us hang out here in what I call the crowded middle. So you're selling a lot of the same things as everybody else and kind of competing on price all at about the same level. So the challenge is when we talk about positioning is how do we differentiate ourselves in this crowded middle? So sometimes it's the words, sometimes it's the positioning. Sometimes the problem is the experience itself. So go back with me one more time in the Wayback Machine. The year was 1984 and this goofball in the middle is yours truly. The thing behind my head, kind of over here to the left, is an Akai reel-to-reel -reel tape player that my dad bought when he was in the Navy. Now, my dad would do these cool things. This was my birthday party in 1984. This is the year before. So my dad would record this message from the wizard. It seemed legit to me that the wizard would just show up and record a message on our tape player. Um, and the wizard would leave little birthday rhymes, like, if you're looking for a present that's sparkling and clean, then check inside of the washing machine. And so I would get up and would nearly pee my pants and I would run to the washing machine and I would check and pull it out and bring it back and I would unwrap it. And so this year in particular, I pulled out the crown jewel of 1980s boys toys, the Millennium Falcon, yes, the Millennium Falcon. But here's what's interesting. If you look at the look on my face during the process and after I received the gift, which one was better? This is no doubt an A-plus gift, but more importantly, it was an ultra A-plus experience. So think about if you're a cable television company or if you're a dental practice or you run customer support, Maybe you have an experience problem. And it works like this. You don't ever hire somebody because you think it's going to suck. It starts out pretty good. You're optimistic. And then all of a sudden, as soon as the delivery guy is an hour late or the two hygienists are talking over you, you might have the best dentist on the planet. And if the two hygienists are talking about what they're going to do that weekend and one of them jabs you in the, in the mouth with something, you're like, she doesn't even know I'm here. Your experience starts to dip. This is called the dip problem. Now, there's a dentist that I've been to just down the street from here called Dental Spa. Dental Spa puts headphones on you, lets you listen to music. You can see Sports Center on the ceiling, and you can get a foot massage as you're getting your teeth cleaned. Ladies and gentlemen, this solves the dip problem. So if you think about how you deliver products or services 
to your client, how could you solve your dip problem in the way the wizard might? So if you think about um, grades and reputation, what do those things have in common? They are earned. So I hope that the grade you earn is the grade you receive, and the grade that you receive is an A plus, and it was earned. Thank you. Still got a flaming heart, can't get my... Oh.